Welcome to the Missouri 811 and Kansas 811 podcast. Uh, I'm Nick Reza with Missouri 811, and this is my good friend Art York from uh, Kansas 811, and he's here to tell you a little bit about what's going to be on these podcasts. Great. Thanks, Nick. Um, really looking forward to these podcasts. Nick and I decided a couple months ago that we wanted to put a podcast together, invite some friends, some uh, clients, things like that from across the industry, from utilities, locators, excavators, and we want to talk about what's going on in the field. Uh, we thought uh, it would be a great opportunity to hear some of the success stories out there, maybe some issues they're having. Uh, we plan on talking about a little bit of everything from uh, what we've done in the past. Nick and I both have a background in utilities and locating, and now we've both been in the one call industry for the last eight, ten years. Um, work together on a lot of projects. We wanted to partner up and do this, and so welcome. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, please let us know if you're ever interested in uh, being part of our podcast. Reach out to Nick or I. We'd love to have you on, um, but we really like to have a lot of good guests with a lot of good knowledge out there so you can take something away from it. I also have a little bit of fun while we're, we're doing our podcast. So thanks. Sit down, relax, enjoy the show, and uh, thanks for being here. Thank you, Arch. You know, and, and Rex, that's a pretty good segue because kind of some of the stuff you've talked about. Um, obviously, your history in the business of bearing those utilities being involved, but you are very, very active in damage prevention. Um, you've always dedicated yourself to damage prevention, not just the putting the plant in the ground, but avoiding those strikes, avoiding those damages to your customer and to the other utilities. So you mentioned um, a little bit like the Government Affairs Group. Um, you currently are an advisor to the Kansas 811 Board of Directors. I know you've been involved on in a national level with the Common Ground Alliance. Um, how important is it for business owners like yourself to be involved with the damage prevention side of the house? And how important it is to push for those things that will, will protect those utilities? You know, I believe it's critical to be involved with the process. And you know, my involvement with damage prevention started really um, in the field, seeing the errors and the inefficiencies of it then. And, uh, and then in, in uh, the late 90s, k and had an incident that changed and put much more focus on it. And that was we cut a gas line, the gas line caught fire, exploded. There was in in injuries to some homeowners. Uh, it was a major, major damage. And uh, as a result, you know, the, the, the gas line was marked wrong. And uh, as a result of that damage, um, you know, I got much more involved with damage prevention and tried to be a voice for improvement and a voice for excavators. Because at the time, and still today, quite frankly, excavators don't really have much of a voice. Right. Um, at, you know, the one call level, uh, at the safety level, the common ground alliance level, all of that is primarily the facility owners or the one calls or the cities or municipalities or whatever. The, 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 there's a seat there at the table for excavators, but for whatever reason, they don't take it. Hmm. And I, I have dedicated myself for years because of that incident for public safety, for efficiency reasons, for uh, safety of you know, the construction crews, the, the homeowners, to, to try to improve the, the damage prevention process. And um, so, and I've seen, you know, major, major improvements in that. I've also been frustrated because there's some things that don't seem to ever change. Right. And and uh, as a result, um, you know, we, we, we still have problems. You know, I, rec I recall back in the 70s, you know, there was a water line cut. My dad had to respond on it. It was the middle of winter. I had to help my dad, right? So 
I went out there and, and the water line wasn't marked, right? Mm-hmm. It was cut, it wasn't marked. Guess what? Today, 50 some years later, look, water line's still not getting marked. Right. Right. So things still weren't getting changed, right? And and so you know, the mandatory participation in in the one call system should be one of those staples. Right. Yeah. And for what for multiple reasons, there's there there is uh, companies that don't want to participate in one call. So right. you know, there, there's an example of things change, but maybe not so fast. Sure. So, yeah, and yeah, and because every state's a little different. Some states have mandatory, some states don't, as we know. Um, and it is it's very frustrating. Um, it's frustrating for Nick and I's position to working for directly for the one call to get those those people to be involved more. You mentioned earlier, you know, the seats at the table for the excavating community. A lot of times, and we, and we know some of the same people that have been involved with some of the national stuff, the Allen Graves of the world, the AGCs and stuff. And there's always someone that tries there but it seems like getting that horsepower behind the excavators to be more involved. As you know, you're part of our Kansas Danvers Prevention Council. You're involved with everything we do, and we constantly are asking for more representatives from the excavating community. So do you think it's, is it a financial thing, or do they don't think it's worth their time, or or don't know the importance? What, what do you think the biggest hang-up is for not getting those people to that seat? I think everybody is just so busy now trying to take care of business. Right. They just don't have the time to take, to dedicate to it. Right. I think that's the biggest reason. I'd say secondary, they maybe don't realize the value of them sitting at that table. Sure. It, seem, it seems like you get more people to the table after an incident. You mentioned the, the issue KNW had with that gas, and then and the, you turned around and dedicated a big portion of your life to helping with damage prevention, protect the public. And I've seen other companies in that same scenario to where it takes someone getting hurt or a major damage or maybe even a big financial cost to get them involved to, to know the importance. And, I, and I, I don't like it that that's, it's a knee-jerk reaction. So um, we're constantly looking for ways to promote, to get people to the table. And I will say in Missouri, I've noticed a big change in the last couple of years, even our legislative process we're working with AGCMO in Missouri, excavators all the time, trying to really work in close with them to get new legislation out. Because most of our legislation is outdated with a lot of stuff. So, but they are getting a seat at the table. We're really working close with those guys. And those guys are actually starting to really be involved on our board. We've got a couple of advisory seats there with us too. So I see a change. It doesn't happen all at once, but I do see excavators getting more involved in the process. Yeah, and I think handing down that torch is important. I think uh, we have to find the people to take the spots. We see that a lot in this industry when someone leaves their legacy and what they do go with them. Um, and kind of like Nick mentioned, we got, uh, you know, Bob Seller. Seller Construction was on the board for many years in Missouri as an advisor, and he's handed that role off. I think it's Jeremy now. Jeremy Davenport. Davenport yeah. says there. So it's a good transition. So we'd like to see those people come in. Um, but we still see the people that leave more on the utility side who are really dedicated to damage prevention if they leave someone new doesn't understand it and they're they kind of step away from it and i'm seeing that more and more in the telecommunication industry Um, i was a part of a t-com for 20 years prior to getting into the one call business and we were very very accurate with damage prevention because customer acquisition for one if we had a fiber cut we could lose customers and today it seems like we've had a big change everything's so redundant I don't know if the focus is not on the customer anymore, but um, it's, it's very difficult even to get the TCOM industry to be involved with any damage prevention. They kind of, if they contract that work out, sometimes they step away from it. Now there's still a few players out there that are involved, but we're, we're losing that legacy of the people that are involved. Um, with the utilities, every excavator is working for someone, right? Um, they're getting paid from someone. They're digging a hole. They're trenching. They're doing something for somebody. That's how they get work. Um, would it ever be valuable if the utilities were ever to go to the excavators that they hire and say, we want you to be in damage prevention. We want you to be part of it. Um, to work with us, you need to be 
vested in the damage prevention industry or be part of, you know, take that seat, come to the seat. I, I think it should be mandatory um, that they, you know, at least follow the best practices Correct. that are published. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've, I've promoted that. When I was a co-chair of the local Common Ground Alliance chapter, um, you know, my, one of my goals was to get more contractor participation or excavator participation, and you know, it ebbed and flowed. And it, 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 it I think, f coming from a facility owner and a requirement from the facility owner or certainly would help. Right. Uh, no question about that. And, uh, you know, I advise my telecommunication customers that, the, that they should do that. Uh, whether they do it or not is, you know, their business. But uh, I, I think the other part of the equation is, you know, the old saying, follow the money. Um, I think people don't realize how much cost there is associated with a utility damage. Right. And I, I, I so there's a, a company or a, a association that was put together called the Infrastructure Protection Coalition. That was a group of individual associations excavator, contractor organizations, and locator organizations that, that commissioned a study and a, uh, of reviewing um, each individual state's one-call laws and their regulations and the effect of effectiveness of those or the inefficiencies of those. And part of their process was to establish or estimate the cost associated with damages. For Kansas alone, it's estimated in 2020 or in 2019, study was done in 2021, the estimated cost for damages in 2019 in Kansas, $330 million. And another $70 million related to inefficiencies in the one call process and network. Right. Late locates, no locates, shut down crews, you know, do all, all of that without even having a damage. So there's $400 million that's estimated in Kansas in 2019. I'm sure it's gone up sure. like everything else. To me, that is a massive amount of money that should be able to be captured if we could make improvements, massive improvements in damage prevention. Right. Good so agree. follow the money. Sure. Right? Now, I know there is some companies out there, I can't quote exactly who they are, some facility owners that have done studies that says, for every dollar we put into damage prevention, we get X dollar in return. And I, my understanding is it, 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 it's, it's pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. So why company facility owners don't take the initiative um, to do more in the damage prevention role? Because it does save them money in the long run. It saves everybody money in the long run. So do you think that they make that choice or maybe even not even consciously make a choice of not to be part of it because they either don't understand that part of it or the money being lost or the money it takes? There are states across the country that have more regulations, more rules and or laws about involvement, about doing those kind of things, enforcement boards, review boards, different things like that. Do you see a value in the states you've worked in where it is more stringent? Uh, 
Uh, I'm anti more rules. Okay. However, I do believe there is a place for rules and regulations. Right. My feeling is today that there is plenty of rules on the books, but they're not getting followed and they're not getting enforced. So I believe that if we had a more, much more fair and aggressive and timely enforcement process, that we could make a change in damage. I, I just believe that wholeheartedly. Sure. And um, so, you know, one of the th uh, one of the things that that we propose to the Kansas Corporation Commission is is a, a damage prevention board of some kind. And, you know, that's still under some scrutiny and some review, possibly. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure that it wouldn't be more efficient just to have KCC people uh, follow, you know, the damages and the people that that especially the repeat damages, right. the repeated offenders of the rules should have some discipline. Sure. Should have education first. Maybe it's just a matter of education. They didn't. They didn't know the rules. Right. And I'm, I'm a big advocate for, you know, education. Educate them the right way to do things, and then maybe they won't do it. But if education don't work, then maybe they do need some kind of a uh, fine. So, yeah, 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 and that's kind of what I was going to with this some thought process is I would rather see a company change their ways and become better at damage prevention um, by being fined than I would see them change their ways because somebody got hurt. Uh, and it seems like, you know, it's got to be substantial enough. Um, I know in Missouri there's certain things with the Attorney General's office that if they do get fined, they can meet with their damage prevention reps and have that. The, the, yeah, the, training. Still, the training and reduce a little bit of the value but you still see those repeats or you still see the people it's like well it's cheaper you know one of the worst things as a damage prevention person the safety guys I hate to hear anybody say it was cheaper for me to cut it than it is to either wait for locates or hand dig around it it's cheaper for me just to pay for it to get fixed and I think that's the wrong mentality out there in the field because that's when someone's going to get hurt yeah and I think there is still a lot of education that needs to be done out there I mean we talk to people every day that just they don't understand the rules or stuff like that but there's also a lot of repeat offenders too I would agree with that yeah and in our roles uh, with the one call we, we run into that quite a bit we still run into the whole you know I, don't, I think you know it's job security because we still have to educate we're going to continue to educate but we still run into people that will say I've been in the business 30 years and uh, you start talking to them and they, they don't know the process and it's like okay so we and I know you've been at my meetings for the last 10 years having dinner and eating breakfast with me but uh, it's not it's not sinking in so we we do have to find a better way or more ways to educate so it really sets in I think both Missouri 811 and Kansas 811 we have LMS programs we have all kinds of training available it's free but you know it's quite underutilized honestly it's, and we're starting to see different people um, make it a requirement and I'm you said you're not a big fan rule. I'm not a big fan of hearing the word requirement. I don't like to add more requirements to someone. However, if it takes a requirement to get them to the table, then okay. Um, I'm starting to see smaller cities, different places, but put that in place. If you're going to be a contractor in that city and get a permit to work, you have to prove that at least you went through some of the one call training so your people at least know the safety aspect of it. So, you know, maybe that's the right way. Some, some rules and regulations are necessary. Right. And they can be certainly beneficial. To, sure. um, so, but uh, I, I do believe that education is a key to it. Right. And how we go about better educating sure. is, you know, there's probably plenty well, people, of ideas there. Yeah, people are consuming information different ways nowadays than they ever used to. And that's kind of one of the reasons we started this podcast is like, is there people that younger generations that are coming up in the excavation world or utility world that yeah. consume things differently than we used to. 
Well, Absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, actually just sitting here talking, and that's why I like these podcasts, because we talk to people like you. And we, but I'm sitting here thinking, it's, you know, we, we, we educate and we gear towards the excavator 90%, if not 95%. That's where our education stands. You know, I think maybe we need to start rethinking and we need to educate utilities. We need to educate those facility owners about damage prevention as well. Now, granted, they come to our meetings sometimes and hear us do our speech, but we're really gearing it towards safe excavation. Maybe we need to look at more safe damage prevention practices within the utilities as well. So I, I think that could be a major impact if, because I've seen it. Uh, I give, give an example, and I won't, I won't name the name, but is, there was a local gas company that was poor at best mm-hmm. at locating and lo- locating their facilities. Had a number of issues, number of damages, number of issues that, you know, was bad. <clears throat> they decided to make a sea change. They decided to put tremendous amount of resources in locating their facilities and damage prevention. To, to go to as much as if, if, the, locate, or if the, the excavator couldn't find it, that the locator couldn't find it, they'd send a crew out to find it with a vacuum excavation equipment. And they, they, they've done 180 degree turn. That's now awesome. they're the best. I think they 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 take it yep. seriously, and and so it can be done. Sure. Yep. You know, I, I don't know what it cost them. I don't know. You know, I'm sure it was not cheap, uh, but uh, you know, all indications are that it's it, they get a return on their investment. First of all, you know, they might have prevented somebody from dying. Sure. So you can't put a price on that. Right. So. Uh, so it can be done that from a from a facility owner perspective, if they make the commitment to damage prevention, that you know there's technology out there, there's you know the ability to you know locate things and and, and sure. be safe and and uh, you know so it, it's it's about their commitment. Right. Yeah, and just being involved. I mean, I I I seen that in the industry I was in before of. I actually had one of my very good mentors um, growing up through the telecommunication business, and he was in the damage prevention side for a major TCOM. And he uh, he told me one time, and it really hit at home, is he says, "You're going to continue to have to educate upper management to stay involved with damage prevention." And he said the reason being is is if there's a change of guard and we have new upper management who will oversee the damage prevention program, one of the first things they say is they say, "Well, we don't have damages." So why do we need a damage prevention program? And they cut it. Or they wash their hands of it or contract it out, and then they walk away from it, and then they, then they don't understand why their damages start to increase. And so I think that's something that we got to continue to educate on, for sure, is to get the utilities. So, you know, i got a couple notes that uh, I'm going to go back to my drawing board and see, and, you know, maybe we have to te- tweak our, or add more education for the yeah. other side, not just the guys moving dirt. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I, I've tried to do in my involvement with damage prevention over the years is, you know, first of all, bring an open mind. You know, I could be rigid and say, uh, you know, because I'm looking at it from an excavator point of view. But I think I bring a little uniqueness there in that, uh, you know, yes, I'm an excavator, have been an excavator, and know it from that standpoint. Um, KMW provided contract locating services for a number of years. So I saw it from that side about, you know, how difficult it was to locate stuff when you don't have good maps or impossible yeah. in some <laughs> yep. cases right. or, you know, how you could get, you know, 100 locates in one day and you got two days to get them done. I mean, you know, all of those challenges that we're facing today, I, you know, I experienced in, in, in some form or fashion. So, so from, from you know, and, and facility owner, you know, I, 
I, I, I've worked with facility owners now for years, and I understand their their perspective when it comes to that. Um, municipalities work with municipalities and, and their challenges and the effects of damages. Uh, again, you know, if it's if it's catastrophic, it could be you know major major problem, and somebody could die, and so. I, what I've tried to do is bring that perspective to damage prevention and, and you know, my involvement in the damage prevention process and, and you know, Kansas 811 and, you know, is, uh, you know, at a national level, the National Common Ground Alliance, uh, the, the Power and Communication Contractors Association, you know, a legislative affairs a committee member there to, to hopefully, you know, guide you know, guided from from a national level, um, and you know my involvement with Kansas eight one one as an advisory advisory member. Because I'm an excavator, I don't get a seat at the table related to voting. But you know, at least I got a seat at the table. Sure. Yeah, so, and I think I think there are some states looking at that. I think most states have an excavator advisor, and and probably I know we're kind of pushing on time a little bit, but I did want to touch base with a little bit on that as an advisor for a one call board, um, not just necessarily Kansas eight one one. What what's an important message you can send to your peer excavators that are advisors on boards? Um, is, there, is there any advice? Because you've been obviously a uh, a great advisor for Kansas 811 for many years, um, and I know your your opinion is very well respected. What what can you tell your peer excavators out there who sit on these boards or are looking to get on a board as an advisor? Well, first of all, I would say, don't hesitate to get on the board if you can, because you know the old saying: you're either at the table or on the table. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so you know, get on, get on it. Uh, I, I also would say, don't uh, you know, don't be too quick, or don't be too rigid. Um, you know, look at all aspects of it, and not just from an excavator standpoint, but be an advocate for those things that are going to affect excavators and be, you know, have your voice heard. So, great. Well, um, I know we're, uh, we're, we're about that hour yeah. mark. We're good. I definitely appreciate your time today. It's a great conversation. <laughs> um, anything else you'd like to add, Nick? Anything, any other questions? Oh, no, this has been great. It's, it's awesome to have your point of view in here. So thank you very much for taking your time. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you guys and to, you know, just discuss damage prevention and, you know, hopefully uh, in some way I can influence uh, in a positive way damage prevention in the future because of this podcast. Yeah. So I appreciate the opportunity to sit down and do it. So. Well, thank you. Right. Well, well, we're going to wrap things up. I uh, appreciate all our listeners today jumping on. If you have any questions, reach out to Nick or I. Um, if you do have questions <coughs> for Rex, um, we can put you in contact with him as well if you need some advice or or uh, any questions about anything we talked about today, just let us know. Um, and uh, as always, if you want to be part of our podcast, reach out to us. Um, we'd love to have you on. We're uh, we're just going to make this a monthly thing and get out there and talk Absolutely. to people. Absolutely. Very casual, easy to talk to. It's great and a lot of fun. So thanks for everyone's time today. Thank you again, Rex. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Well, that's it. Arce, do you have any final words? No, I just want to say thank you for joining today. Appreciate your time. Hope you got a little knowledge out of it and had a little fun. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>